Yo guys, and in today's video, I'm going to be telling you why Tom Holland is the best Spider-Man. But Lewis, didn't you already make a video on why Tobey Maguire is the best Spider-Man, you hypocritical mother- Yes, 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 calm down there. Believe it or not, I'm not a Sam Raimi stan. I'm a Spider-Man stan, so get your facts right, mate. Yes, it's true, I love all versions of Spider-Man. I love Tobey, I love Andrew, and I love Tom Holland. All of these different live-action Spider-Man have something really special about them, and I love it. Pfft, I mean, <laughs> I love every version of Spider-Man, really, and I don't really think there's one I can't get invested in. I love Miles, I love Spectre. Spectacular, all of 90s Spider-Man, all of them, yes, even Marvel's Spider-Man. But Lewis, if you said you love all Spider-Men, doesn't that make your opinion invalid because you'll just say any Spider-Man thing is the greatest thing ever made? Hold your horses! Hold them! No! Because... This is where me looking at all these different Spider-Men and women from a storytelling and character development standpoint comes in from. I can understand that Spectacular tells a better and coherent story than Marvel's Spider-Man. I will agree that both Toby's and Tom's Spider-Man have more coherent stories and learning curves than Andrew's, although I still love the first Andrew movie and what it does. The second one brings it down though. But guess what? I'll still watch it because it's freaking Spider-Man. What I'm trying to say in this overly long segment is that every Spider-Man has something special about them, something that they do have above all the others, and there are also things that are absolutely stupid about them all as well. I'm even going to be making a criticizing Spider-Man video where I criticize all the Spider-Man films individually just to show I'm not as much of a suck up as I come across to be. And with that being said, here's why Tom Holland is the best Spider-Man, and this is opinion, so yeah. Tom Holland brings the youth to the character. I don't think this could be said enough, but both movies feel like a breath of fresh air. The Tom Holland movies feel modern, they feel new. And I know they don't really have the feel and that Spider-Man facade when it comes to a Spider-Man movie that say the Raimi and the Web movies have, but it should feel like that. In the previous movie franchises, Spider-Man has been this grand hero who has had triumphant web swings and it feels like Spider-Man. That's because Spider-Man is on his own and there's no other superheroes like Iron Man, like the Guardians, like the Avengers just flying around willy-nilly that he could bump into at any point. However, this is the case in the MCU and this isn't such a bad thing. I don't think it's necessarily the fact that Spider-Man can't be seen as a triumphant and epic and this big time thing in the MCU. I think it's because the writers don't want him to be. And I'm gonna be honest, I prefer when Spider-Man is on his own because you get that feeling from watching him be the best superhero ever. But I really like what the MCU is doing because it seems they're building up to it. It seems that by the end of the third movie or by time another Spider-Man trilogy with Tom Holland comes around, there will be that triumphant feel. And it will have developed over time, it would have built up to it. And if you don't believe me that they're doing it on purpose, look at Spider-Man PS4. Not only is he eight years into his career, meaning he's probably been at the stage that Tom Holland has been at, but Doctor Strange, Black Cat, Daredevil, and the Avengers are all present in the same universe. And Spider-Man feels like just like he did back in the Webb and Raimi films. So I think that having this built up and keeping Tom's Spider-Man really grounded is a good idea. I think that it adds a breath of fresh air once again, like I said before. Also, whilst on the topic of him being triumphant, if you're telling me that there should be at least one of those moments in every Spider-Man film, well then, even though it might be a small scale, Under the Rubble Homecoming scene is really all I need to say on that case. Oh, come on, Spider-Man! Now let's cover the Iron Boy Jr. stuff. I don't see why everyone hates this so much. His character arc over this trilogy is literally to not become the next Iron Man. Yes, there's still gonna be elements of Tony Stark in his life here and there, and I'm not gonna lie, I didn't like when they played ACDC at the end of Far From Home, but it didn't exactly regress his characters, so I didn't really care. But his entire learning curve is to become his own man as he transitions from a boy to an adult over the course of his MCU career, which ironically fits into him not knowing how to do shit in the first and second movie, and him being a complete klutz sometimes. This whole trilogy is like one massive coming of age story. Homecoming was the massive responsibility movie, Far From Home was about trust within other people and himself, and the third one is almost certainly going to be identity. And it fits because he learns responsibility, then he has to have trust in himself to do the right thing and carry that responsibility that Tony has helped him teach him, and then he has to figure out who he really is when his identity is leaked in the third one. It's a whole arc about him not being the next Iron Man, although he technically is now the face of the MCU, or at least that looks like where they're going with it. He is the next Iron Man, but he's different from Tony. He's a different person. If Tony was going to save someone, he'd do it in a certain way. Maybe Peter would do it differently. This is why I love the MCU Spider-Man. It's because right now, his character and his arc fits right in with that coming-of-age style growing up and out of Tony Stark phase. 
You guys just have to be patient. It's not like Tom only gets three movies to grow and that's it. So he has to become his own man in the first movie to leave room for other stories into the next ones. No, this is a gradual process because let's be honest, we both know that Spider-Man 3 is not going to be Tom's last Spider-Man movie. Whether the next one is in the MCU or under Sony's full control, there is going to be a Spider-Man 4 with Tom Holland, almost certain. This is why I love Tom Holland. He's youthful, he's growing up, he's becoming his own man, he's becoming Spider-Man. And I understand why people wouldn't like it because it's not straight in there like Toby or Andrew movies were. I'm not gonna lie, I was one of those people at first who were a bit on the fence with the idea, although I still enjoyed the movies. However, I feel like I'm more inclined to be patient with this Spider-Man in the MCU now, because I know after seeing the direction they're going with the third movie, he will eventually get there. I know Spider-Man will be triumphant eventually. I know he'll become the greatest superhero of the MCU at some point. Or at least come close to there. I mean, there's some right issues. But with that being said, that is why Tom Holland is the best Spider-Man, right? I know I call every Spider-Man the best Spider-Man. Half the reason I use that title is for clicks. But I want people to see why every Spider-Man has something good about them. And this is what I love about Tom's Spider-Man. Thanks for watching. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to hit the like button. Support me on Patreon in the description below if you do love these videos. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.